Hello guys, and I am bringing you a normal commentary today. I know it has been a while since I've actually sat down and brought, you know, just your gen generic commentary, but this is one that I've been saving for a while. Um, it, not the gameplay itself, but rather the story that kind of is going to going to come along with the gameplay. Now this is M14 gameplay. Um, a lot of people in my class act video, and if you haven't seen it, make sure you check out the latest episode of my class act. Um, it is the L96 sniper rifle. It was actually um, pretty, pretty awesome if you ask me. It actually turned out fairly well. Um, I was proud of it because I am not a good sniper. So if you haven't checked that out, feel free to uh, check that out. Um, I'll link it like now in an annotation and you can uh, check it out after the video. Actually, why don't you just click it in the description? That way you don't click away and miss this awesome story. So uh, with that out of the way, I want to just go ahead and start the story. And if you can tell by the title, I'm sure that I've already given away the uh, premise of the story. Um, so let's just go ahead and start at my freshman year of college. Um, at this point, I am a naive young college student and extremely bored in our dorm rooms and for some reason me and my friends had the um, hobby of messing with people on AIM. I mean it's not something that is, I, I, it's not really that strange, I mean a lot of people did it and you gotta, you gotta remember this is back in like 2005. So AIM still had chat rooms and you know you still had your, your, your random uh, internet pervs running around in those but uh, at the time to catch a predator was extremely popular it was like basically when it was at its height um, people were watching it and it was pretty much the talk of the TV at the time because um, I don't know it's just something about the show watching people getting trapped and it was just interesting to people and we were interested too so you know we get this bright idea of going into these AIM chat rooms and just trolling people uh, we would go into like, let me think of some of the names, like Home Alone or like <laughs> Women Only or something like that. And there would always be these creepy old men in there and like younger guys. So eventually like we would go, we made these like fake AIM names and we didn't hold back. We made the profiles with like girly, you know, quotes in them. We even made, I don't know if you guys remember this, but um, back in like the early 2000s to like 2004-ish, there was these things called like um, extended profile in AIM where if you clicked it, you had all these like little like information thing about the person and we had the pink font going and everything like it was we were trying to sell it and we even had like um, we we google searched like pictures and even had like fake stock photos to send to people whenever they would ask for a picture so uh, we would enter these chat rooms with these profiles we made and I'm pretty sure my name was like Jessica or something and you know I was from we were by we were in Champaign which is in Illinois at the University of Illinois so we weren't too far from Chicago and we would always get these pervs you know from the area I am you know it's like as soon as we would enter the room we would get like you know 10 a, 10 I am saying ASO so it got to the point where we were getting really bold we were really confident that we could <laughs> take this to the next level and we start getting these um you know like I said these random I am's and so these one guy start talking to us and it turns out he actually lives in Ohio but has family that lives in the air where my school is at so we're like oh man this is the mother load but this guy wants to talk on the phone and before we had done this and some of my friends who actually lived in a different dorm um, had given out their dorm phone number and tried to impersonate a girl which obviously isn't going to work very well um, I would say out of my friends I was doing the best job of convincing them that I was actually a female um, I'm not too proud of that to be honest because um, never really seen myself as the type but I guess I just played the role better than them you know I used the LOLs I used the smiley faces and I really just sold myself but uh, we had had failures with the phone part um, before but uh, back then texting wasn't huge but I was one of the few people I knew that actually had like an unlimited texting plan at the time I mean this is like I said this is 2005 so I'm like you know what I got this so I give the guy my cell phone number but I tell him that he can only text me um, he can't call me because you know my dad is doesn't you know I don't want my dad seeing this so this guy is you know he's all into this he's wanting to text me he's wanting to meet up and I don't know about you guys but it is not a pleasant thing to to wake up in the morning and you know get ready for your lecture and you'll be sitting in your lecture then all of a sudden you get a raunchy text from like a 35 year old man wanting to meet up so uh, the name the name this guy went by was Kevin and uh, he was from Ohio and he had family that lived in central Illinois and he was going to come visit um, them and on the way he wanted to meet up so at this point I was skeptical I knew that this is probably getting a little bit over you know out of hand but you know my friends like no 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 you got this guy you got this guy so we keep texting, you know, after a week goes by, he's like, yep, I'm for sure coming, and he's, you know, wanting to meet up, he's already talking about, like, where we're going to go, we're going to, you know, like, 
first we're going to go to Steak and Shake, then he was going to get us a hotel, maybe going to a movie. And I mean, this guy was sending me raunchy texts. And, you know, I would reveal them here, but it would be extremely weird for me to say them aloud. Um, I might say that for, like, the blooper reel in part four, because this is going to be a four-part series, because it isn't, does not end with just this guy. Um, it actually gets more interesting as they go on. Um, this one ends a little bit anticlimactic, but it is still interesting in its own respect. But, um, <laughs> so this guy's coming to meet us, meet us and... Like I said, these texts are just out of hand, and he is just a creepy old man. I think he was like 40. Um, he worked for some industrial company, and he was getting the time off, and he was going to drive his... He had to deliver a truck to like his uncle that lived in like really close to where the school was at. So we're arranging this meetup. He... Um, <clears throat> He wants to meet at a steak and shake on one of the main like strips of the area, so we're like, yeah, that's perfect. You know, it'll be open area. If this guy like goes nuts on us, we can you know be there to kind of <laughs> there'll be people there to kind of save us from the embarrassment. But um, this guy um, is all about it. He's he's ready to go. Like we make the we make the meeting, so we arrive at steak and shake. And as soon as we get there, we see that there's like a huge group of cops I guess they were on their dinner and I'm sitting there and I finally I get a text and the guy's like yeah I'm not going in there there's too many cops and I'd rather just not be around cops and I'm just like yeah oh, that's kind of weird I mean I guess I guess it would be weird um, when you know that you're a pedophile and you're sitting there trying to hook up with like this 14 year old girl but anyways he spooks so he spooked out of the steak and shake meetup location so I'm like I text him like all right there's a Walmart that's right next door let's go meet there but before we had ever left to meet up with this guy we made the we made the stupid decision to all wear hockey jerseys and it was really obvious that we were in a group so we get to Walmart we're walking around and we all have on these hockey jerseys and uh my girlfriend at the time is with us so that is extremely awkward and you know I don't know about you guys but the way to woo the ladies is not to be a uh child predator and trapper because she was not she was pretty off put by this but we did anyway so we get to walmart and the guy is you know he's spooked because he's like oh all i see is these kids walking around in hockey jerseys he's like i i, I want to call this off and you know at this point we've been able to figure out who it is because i can see him texting on his phone and this guy's big you know i wouldn't want to mess with him i mean even my friend is you know six no, six six like you know 250 pounds and i still wouldn't have wanted to mess with this guy because who knows how someone's going to act when they're like enraged so this guy, um, basically, he calls it off, and as we're leaving, we basically, we reveal to him that it's been a huge scam. We, we run up to him and say, the jig is up, and then we drive off. And the guy texts me later saying how we broke his heart, and he continues to text me on and off for the next couple of weeks saying how I super embarrassed him and all this. And it, t it turns out he didn't actually realize that it wasn't a girl that was doing this. But... Um, Hope you guys enjoyed this. This is the first part of three. I will be making uh, two more parts, so be, f be sure to rate this and uh, comment and let me know what you guys think. And uh, I will see you guys next time in part two and three where it gets a lot more interesting. Peace.